Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last... <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, our happy postman, and our special guest, Jack Carson. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. The coffee that gives you so much more for so little more, that is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world. Yes, Maxwell House. Expertly blended and radiant roasted for rich, mellow, extra flavor. Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. As we look in the Burns home today, we find Gracie answering the front door buzzer. Coming. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> Here's your mail. Thank you, Mr. Postman. This is Halloween. Are you going around and knock on doors and frighten people? Oh, no, I haven't time for that. I'm going to make my husband, George, a movie star. I see. That way you can frighten a much larger audience. <laughs> oh, no, you don't understand, Mr. Postman. George is going to replace Clark Gable as the lead in The Hucksters. Are you still trying to prod your poor husband into that picture? Well, I certainly am. You see, the Hucksters is supposed to give you the lowdown on radio. Isn't George the perfect choice? Yes. I guess he's about as low down on radio as you can get. <laughs> well, it might interest you to know that I asked a thousand people if they preferred Clark Gable or George Burns, and it came out even. Only 500 said they wanted Gable. Really? Yes. The other 500 said, who's George Burns? <laughs> I still think you should forget it. Oh, not when I know I'm right. You just wait. Someday I'll say to you, Mr. Postman, George Burns has replaced Clark Gable. And on that same day, a red-skinned gentleman with horns and a tail will say to me, Mr. Postman, it's frozen over. <laughs> Besides, Mrs. Burns, your husband refuses to make the picture. Oh, don't worry. I haven't even started to work on him yet. There's one way a wife can make her husband do anything. Flatter him. Yes, my wife does that. She flatters you? Oh, flatters. I thought you said flattens. <laughs> I can't recall who said it. I know I never read it. I only know they tell me they love the grass. Well, here comes the little genius down to breakfast. You run along, Mr. Postman. I'll start the flattery. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> and with a girl in your arms, it's wonderful, wonderful in every way. So they... <laughs> oh, what a beautiful voice. And no wonder. It comes out of such a beautiful container. <laughs> That's me, huh? Yes. Sit down to breakfast, dear. Okay. Pass me the toast. Here. Oh, George, you're so strong. You just rip that toast apart with your bare hands. <laughs> Yeah, I, I usually wear gloves. Oh, I love to watch you eat. You have the rhythm and coordination of a great athlete. I have, huh? Oh, yes. You put egg in your mouth with one hand while you wipe it off your tie with the other. <laughs> Must be a pleasure to watch. Oh, you are, darling. Being married to you is a perpetual joy. With you in the house, no sorrow, no sadness can touch me. I can always look at your little face and laugh. Thanks, kid I love you
love you so much that you make my whole life a poem. I do? How true. See, the poetry just comes rolling out. Oh, fine. You're divine. <laughs> That's enough. You're the stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> my goodness. We do love each other, don't we? Well, sure. And people who love each other should do things for each other, shouldn't they? Right. George. No, I won't replace Gable and the Hucksters. Oh, you knew what I was leading up to, huh? All along. Well, you pick the most inconvenient times to be intelligent. Gracie, I'm sick and tired of that crazy idea of yours. Now, once and for all, let it drop. But, George, the lead in a picture about radio is just meant for you. You're radio's glamour boy. Oh, honey, don't call me radio's glamour boy, even though it's true. <laughs> It's embarrassing. Oh, people think Como and Sinatra have glamour, but you've had yours so much longer. Gracie. Good things improve with age, and that's you, George. You're like a little round barrel of vintage wine. Gracie. You're like a fine, ripe old cheese. <laughs> Gracie. You're like a priceless antique with curved legs and wide, handsome drawers. <laughs> I've had enough of this silly nonsense. I'm going down to the cigar store. Oh, don't go, George. Stay with me and make my life a poem again. Oh, stop. You're the top. <laughs> See, there it goes. Well, forget it. I'm leaving. You're leaving me grieving. Oh, no. Oh, we're rolling now. Goodbye, Gracie. You're driving me crazy. <laughs> That's too bad. I've been had. Hello, Stanley. Let me have a couple of my favorite cigars. Yes, sir, Mr. Burns. Just as soon as I finish waiting on Mr. Carson here. Mr. Carson? Well, hello, Jack. Hello, George. Uh, let me buy you a cigar, George. No, no, no. I'll buy you one. Two Perfecto Royale, Stanley. Here's your quarter. Thank you. Well, I'm going to enjoy this. Here's your 20 cents change. <laughs> <laughs> let me buy you a cigar, George. No, smoke the one I just bought you. Well, are you sure you can spare this? Oh, sure. I get these to pass out. Well, they should do it, if anything will. <laughs> These Perfecto Royals are great when you, when you want to get away from it all. For example, today, Gracie has made my life unbearable. So I came down here to smoke one of these. But, George, isn't that the coward's way out? <laughs> they won't hurt you, Jack. I've been smoking them for years, and look at me. Let me buy a cigar, George. <laughs> are you going to give me trouble, too? No, I'm only kidding. What kind of trouble is Gracie giving? Oh, she's got another one of those wild ideas. <laughs> she gets some dillies, doesn't oh, she? Oh, boy, wait till you hear this one. <laughs> what? She thinks there's someone better than Clark Gable to play the lead in the Huxley. <laughs> Who is that? Well, <laughs> she says it's a story about radio, so radio's glamour boy should play it. <laughs> uh, radio's glamour boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think that's such a silly idea, George. You don't? No. Your wife knows a man when she sees one. She has excellent taste. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but, Jack, don't you think that's embarrassing for a fella to be called radio's glamour boy? Uh, not when it fits, George. No, not when it fits. You mean you really think it does fit? I really do. Don't you agree? Well, now that you press me, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, after all, what has Gable got that <laughs> radio's glamour boy hasn't got? Is Gable uh, handsomer? Uh, no. <laughs> Is Gable more, uh, talented? Uh, no. Is Gable younger? 
No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Jack, you and Gracie ought to get together. You certainly see eye to eye. Well, we certainly do. Well, I've got to get down to the office. I'll see you later. So long, Jack. So long, George. Gee, imagine Gracie choosing me to take Gable's part. But well, this could start a whole new slogan. Gable's out and Carson's got it. <laughs> Meredith, isn't that Wintergreen for president? That's a great tune, and timely, too. That's right, Bill. Next Tuesday's Election Day in the good old USA. Yeah? Election Day. That's the People's Day when the ballot box comes in and the soap box goes out, and the folks who did the listening rise to speak. It's a great day, Meredith. They'll be coming into town from the farmlands, lining up at dawn in the cities. The people do the talking then, and that's what makes Election Day such a vital and impressive part of the American scene. You know, in its own way, Maxwell House coffee belongs to the American scene, too. Here in America, over the years, the people have made coffee their favorite drink. And more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. Flavor explains this nationwide preference, of course. The rich, full-bodied Maxwell House flavor that results from the masterful blending of these choice, highland-grown Latin American coffees. Manizales from Mellonis. Medellins for richness. Other fine coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. All adding up to great coffee at its flavor peak. So why not know the very best in coffee drinking pleasure? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Simply say, Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Now we find Jack Carson arriving at the Burns home under the impression that Gracie wants him to replace Clark Gable in the Hucksters. I think I'll show Gracie just how close to Clark Gable I really am. I'll do my famous Gable imitation for her. Yes? Well, Jack Carson, hello. Hello, baby. <laughs> I've come to say thank you. Thank you for thinking of me, baby. Oh, you poor boy, you've caught a cold <laughs> No, no, Gracie, I'm, I'm doing an imitation, now listen Hello, baby Who do you think I'm imitating, baby? Now I get it Oh, that's a remarkable imitation <laughs> Thank you You sound exactly like Charles Boyer <laughs> Boyer? No, 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 perhaps I can get it better across with this speech Scarlet, I'm going to take those mules back to the Confederate Army. Mm. Oh, don't tell me. Uh, Dennis Day. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do it again. Scarlet, I'm going to take those mules back to the Confederate Army. I've got it. Peter Lorre. <laughs> Scarlet. Those mules are going to take me back to the Confederate Army. <laughs> Gracie, perhaps this will give it to you. Picture me with larger ears. Larger than those? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I hope so. Larger ears. Oh, I've got it lasting. <laughs> Gracie, who, who was the most exciting male celebrity of our day? Handsome, talented, and, and loaded with sex appeal. Oh, now I know who you mean. Sure. George Burns. <laughs> Let's go back to Lassie. <clears throat> you were closer there. <laughs> oh, no, Jack. I'm sure I can guess it if you'll give me one more chance. Okay, baby. I talk like this and I've got a mustache. 
I'm not sure. That did it. Good. Ronald Coleman. <laughs> now, that's Ronald Coleman. Who is this? Tis a far, far better thing I do. I do now than I have ever done before. <laughs> Clark Gable. <laughs> well, I'm there. I don't know how I got there, but I'm there. Do some more imitations, Jack. You're very good. Yeah, no, thanks. I'll quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> you, you did say that radio's glamour boy should replace Gable, didn't you? Yes, and I said that George should do that. Well, that's what I... Uh, uh, George? George Burns? Yes. George Burns is radio's glamour boy? Can you name anyone more glamorous? Would you like them grouped according to networks? <laughs> now, I, uh, I, I don't think you agree with me about George. Well, Gracie, this has been a bitter blow to me. I thought you wanted me to play the lead in the Hucksters. Oh, Jack, let's be sensible. You're a wonderful comedian, but this calls for a dramatic actor. Uh, can you make people laugh? And uh, you can, I know, but can you make them cry? Well, haven't you seen any of my pictures? <laughs> well, yes, but I mean, make them cry on purpose. <laughs> Gracie, believe me, I'm the one for that part, not George. I'm the better actor. Oh, I'm sorry you think so, Jack. It looks like we'll have to embarrass you publicly. Embarrass me publicly? We'll have an acting contest between Carson and Burns. You'll meet George face to face. Face to face with George? Well, I hope I have hiccups. It'd be a shame to waste a cure like that. <laughs> well, Jack, be here at four o'clock. I'll have the script ready. And then we'll decide who should replace Gable. Okay, goodbye, Scarlett. I'll be back for the acting contest at four. Now I know who you're imitating. You do? Sure, the mad Russian. I do too. <laughs> Carson thought he was radio's glamour boy? That's right, dear. Only an egotistical, conceited jackass could think that. <laughs> Why, that's me. Well, don't worry, George. We'll put him in his place. I told him to come back later, and you two would have an acting contest. An acting contest? Yeah, well, you show him up. Well, there's no kind of acting that you can't handle. You've got everything. Well, look... Even my mother had to admit that. She said that you have the charm of Margaret O'Brien and the strength of Wallace Beery. Well, that's... Uh... Or did she say that the, you had the charm of Wallace Beery and the strength of Margaret O'Brien? <laughs> Never mind what she said. There'll be no acting contest with Carson. But, George... Granted, I'm a pretty fair actor, but Carson's good, too. You're better. He's sort of handsome. You're handsomer. He's a big star. You're bigger. Of course, he's full of hooey. You're fuller. <laughs> Stop defending me. There'll be no acting contest with Carson. All right, if you're willing to surrender, so am I. I won't even tell you how Jack insulted you. He insulted me? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The contest is off. What do you say? Oh, there's no use asking me, George. My lips are sealed. You, you could beat me, and I'd never tell you that he called you a fat little monster. <laughs> well, we did, did he? And wild horses couldn't drag out of me the other dreadful name he called you. Why, that repulsive knucklehead. Darn it. You guessed it. <laughs> well, that does it. The contest is on. Wait till I hit Carson with that big dramatic speech from the miser's dream. And here, under this ragged coat deep in my heart, these words shall remain and last there until the last minute of my life. That honesty is the best policy. Oh, oh back to Vogel, Back to Vogel, Carson, to the tower, to the theater, tower. back to... Meredith Wilson and his chiffon music, a Chopin melody called What More Can I Ask For?
Gracie, do we have to go through with this acting contest? Getting cold feet, Carson? No, no, I'm not getting cold feet. I still think I can act rings around you. Oh, yeah? Let's see you register a few emotions. Okay, name them. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Anger. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Grief. <laughs> well? So much for amateur night. <laughs> now, let's hear from a professional. George, register Joy. Oh. <laughs> Anger. Oh. <laughs> Surprise. Oh. <laughs> Grief. Oh. <laughs> Carson thinks he can act. <laughs> well, Jack, I hope for your sake Warner Brothers don't hear this. They, they'll put George in a picture and you'll be selling papers. I'll go even further than that. If they put George in a picture, they'll be selling papers. <laughs> <laughs> Sore loser. Oh, will you see who that is, dear? I want to finish the script for the acting contest. Come in. Hi, George. Hello, Bill. Well, hello, Jack. Hello, Bill. Hey, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. George here wants to have an acting contest with Hollywood's handsomest and most talented young actor. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Sure. <laughs> Besides, I haven't got time. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, you're, you're a little confused. I said young actor. <laughs> That's me. Well, I'm still confused, Jack. You also said talented. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, think you're talented? Well, I don't like to brag, but I have been referred to as another Sonny Tufts. <laughs> to your age, it should be Daddy Tufts. <laughs> Bill, have you, have you seen me on the screen? Yes, Jack. I caught your love scene in that mystery picture, Two Guys from Milwaukee. Miss? What do you mean, mystery picture? You got the girl. Uh. <laughs> Here's a switch. The hams are carving each other. <laughs> Let's face it, Jack You can't do love scenes Oh, no? Listen, Bill You're beautiful You have eyes like stars Lips like rubies Well, I know I have But you still can't do love <laughs> scenes <laughs> Jack, those corny lines Lips like rubies well, What would you say? Well, I'd say Lips like Maxwell House coffee Ah, uh, there it comes Lips like Maxwell House coffee? Everyone's lips like Maxwell House coffee I know it I know it it's so delicious, Jack. In fact, Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. And of course, you'd never say eyes like stars. Oh, no, I would I, say... I know, I know. Eyes like Maxwell House coffee. You does? I'm mighty fond of it, too. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You see the careful selection and blending of choice Latin American coffees plus radiant roasting give Maxwell House that famous flavor. In fact, it's so wonderful that it's bought by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. So, insist on Maxwell House, Jack. Always good to the last drop. You know, Bill? Yes? You're really very clever. Hmm? They, they should give you a big publicity campaign. Yeah. You, you know that slogan you see everywhere? The year of the yearling? Yeah. Well, you're even bigger than that. Really? You should be billed as the scent of the century. <laughs> All right, boys, we're ready for the acting contest now. Here's the script. By the way, Gracie, who, uh, who's going to judge this contest? Oh, I've chosen a very pretty young actress, a disinterested third party, who will be completely fair and unprejudiced. Oh, swells. So who is she? Me. <laughs> and of course, you are very unprejudiced. Completely. I'm here to see that the better man wins, and I'm sure George will. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, what parts do we play? Well, there are two male roles. One is Napoleon Bonaparte, the brilliant and dashing Emperor of France. And the other is Pierre, a poor common French soldier. Well, I want to show you that I'm completely fair and unbiased, too. I'll take the part of Napoleon. <laughs> oh, he has some wonderful lines, Jack. You see, Napoleon comes home from the battle and finds me, Josephine, with Pierre. Mm -hmm. He flies into a towering rage and cries, Oh, Josephine, you have made me so less miserable. <laughs> oh, Josephine, you have made me so less miserable? Mm-hmm. Wait. 
You speak French as well as I do. Yes. And then you, you draw your sword and strike Pierre dead, shouting, Death to the traitor! Vive la France! Death to the traitor! Vive la France! Say, these are great lines. Let's get started. Well, here are your scripts, boys. Now, you knock at the door, Jack, and we'll start your big piece. Okay, here we go. Who is it? Tijay, vous n'êtes pas. Oh, Pierre. Pierre, my love, or it is my husband, Bonaparte. Mon Dieu. <laughs> what? What will he say? He will say, oh, Josephine, you have made me so less miserable. That's what he will say. Mon Dieu. <laughs> Is I, Bonaparte. Oh, Pierre, Pierre, my lover. What will he do? He will draw a sword and strike me dead, shouting, Death to the traitor! Vive la France! That's what he will do. Yeah, but when? <clears throat> Who is it? He's I, Bon. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like I haven't got a part. <laughs> He's a sore loser. Well, you might as well admit defeat, Jack. You got absolutely nothing out of those wonderful lines, but nothing. You're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> you just stepped out of your class, kid. Yes. You can't act with George Bird. Go back to Warner Brothers. Well, you only have to compete with people like Betty Davis and Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, so long, Jack. See you around. Well, I... I hope this little experience hasn't upset you, Jack. Oh, no, no, not at all. I... I feel fine. Oh, good. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> We cured Jack of giving imitations. When he left, he was really himself. That he was. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Our special guest will be Frank Sinatra. Oh, well, Gracie, we'll have quite a program next week. Frank Sinatra's going to drop over. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll help you pick him up. Good night, folks. <laughs> Jack Carson appears with the courtesy of the Campbell Soup Company. Get bird's eye. Get bird's eye spinach. Dewy, fresh, and delicious as spinach you pick in your own garden. No work. It's whistle clean, all washed and trimmed for you. And it's thrifty, too, because there's no waste. One box serves four people. So get tender, luscious bird's eye spinach tomorrow. But be sure it's bird's eye. Remember... Get bird's eye, bird's eye frosted food. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.